Well, hello, and uh, a very warm welcome to my History, Health and Wellbeing channel. I'm your host, Paul. Um, really looking forward to this evening. Today's guest is a former UK police officer and now an ancient code breaker and spiritual life coach who has authored seven books with others currently in writing. He has appeared on Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie, The Other Side of Midnight with Richard C. Hoagland, and has also presented a documentary series called Higher Consciousness on David Icke's iconic TV channel. So, without further ado, let's bring on today's guest, Mr. Michael Feely. Hello, Michael. Hello. First time we've been called Mystery in a while, so thank you. Uh, good evening to you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so, Michael, today... I really wanted to get into the Bible with you. It's not something that we discussed in our previous show together. Um, we've got a lot of viewers on this channel that really are interested in this subject. So I thought it'd be great to have you on. Um, if Before I give you the floor, if I could just briefly explain my position on this. So I believe that there are many layers to the Bible stories. There's um, esoter esotericism, mythicism, astrotheology, um, but when it comes to the Gospels, I do believe that they have uh, a very strong historical element to them. So that, that's just basically my position. Um, but I'm going to give you the floor and you can talk us through it, basically. So whenever you're ready. Well, thank you. You see, the, the, the Bible and the like does have many different layers of understanding. It actually has seven because seven is, is the key to the third dimension. So layers one to six pretty much are an introduction. And then the seventh layer completes. And you have to understand that the Bible is not a book per se. It is not something that you pick up and read from left to right as a book. Because some people may be aware and some people may notice that Jewish mystics and rabbis, etc., actually read and write from right to left. So when you get the when you get the the Torah, which are the five books of Moses, from Genesis to Deuteronomy, <clears throat> we'd read it from Genesis to Deuteronomy, but they would read it from Deuteronomy to Genesis, from right to left. <clears throat> so first of all, we're reading it wrong. Secondly, we're reading it like a book, and thirdly, we're not getting anywhere anywhere near the seventh layer. So we are stopping mainly at, at, at the church teachings, which is layer one, which is the story. <clears throat> so where does the original Bible teachings come from? It comes from the sermon in stone, which is the Giza plateau. Giza means Ross tail, which means the cross of the head. <clears throat> so what you see in the Bible was written in the Giza pyramids and the Sphinx of Egypt. That was then taken by many different cultures, because when you start looking at the Greeks and different philosophers of Greek, of the Greeks, many of them were Mishra school initiates of ancient Egypt. So a lot of the Egyptian philosophy went with the Greek philosophers back to Greece. <clears throat> so we see in the likes of Plato and Pythagoras and all of these different people, Egyptian mysticism renamed, re-expressed. <clears throat> that is the same with the Kabbalah. That is the same with the Hebrew divisions, which became what, what the Bible is. So you have this line of Egyptian all around the world, but Egyptian, Hebrew, Kabbalah, what we now know as Christianity. <clears throat> so Christianity was really a way in which the Hebrew mystics were able to get the Gentiles to connect to the Hebrew God. Now, the book of the Bible, or the, or the God of the Bible, is Yahweh, or the Tetragrammation YHWH. <clears throat> and we are told that that is the name of the God. But YHWH means to breathe. It means to inhale and to exhale. Give, and you shall receive. So Yahweh is not the biblical God, which in Latin is Jehovah, which is not the biblical God. <clears throat> God doesn't have a name but start looking at the characters and obviously the most famous 
famous one is Jesus Christ, who is the most famous alleged per person to ever have walked the world. You will see that when you look into the names, when you look into the stories, when you look into the secret teachings, you will realize that these were never people. They were never people that walked the earth. They were allegories, parables, and enigmas that sort of hid the secret teaching. <clears throat> and the reason that the secret teachings were hid is firstly, so that they wouldn't be corrupted. Secondly, so that only the people who were deemed worthy enough for the sacred teachings would know about them. And when you look at the likes of the tarot cards and, and, and different things, they are a secret communication, pictorial, numerical, different things. So the characters of the Bible, and there's, there's lots of them, were never real people. But yet the, the early Christian writers and what it is to be Christian is not what we see today. It has a completely different meaning. But the early Christian writers made this character, Jesus Christ, into a singular figure, which is really making people worship, which comes from the word worship. And worship also deals with bread and breath. And the word Jesus means divine breath or the circulation of divine breath. So going into Yahweh, going into the Holy Spirit, going into the breath or bread of life. It is all the connection between man and God through the breath. And that is why the Sphinx of Egypt has no nose, because the Holy Spirit is breathed into the nostrils. And if you don't have a nose, you are disconnected from the Holy Spirit, which means you've lost your connection to God. And that is what the Giza Plateau is also telling us, because the Sphinx is the rise of man from his animal nature to his divine nature. <clears throat> So Jesus, is, is, the word Jesus is really talking about the breath of God. And the word Christ means seed, means grain. In other words, a rebirth, a resurrection of yourself. And even the apostle Philip said that there is no such thing as a resurrection after death. It is a living resurrection because it is a rebirth of self. It is a second coming which is the regeneration of the mind, the Golgotha, the temple. So people have been led astray that these, these, these are actual people and they've pinned all their hopes on actual people who don't exist. And in doing so, they are taken further and further and further down the tunnel of disillusionment. Now, when you look at the Bible that is presented today, when you look at history, that is pre as presented to us today as historical fact, you see that the Church of Rome and the Council of Nicaea and the like, and the Scarlet Council, who are the Vatican Cardinals who wear scarlet, they basically destroyed and hid this ancient knowledge. And they edited it, they took parts out of it, and they re replaced parts and said, this is what we want you to believe. So history, as we know it, is a rewrite by the Church of Rome. And if anybody wishes to believe that the Church of Rome are giving us historical truth, then I'm afraid they're going to be very disappointed because they haven't They've done the opposite. <clears throat> so what we have as a Christian religion today is basically a Church of Rome authorised version of history. Now, when I was in the police <clears throat> and I would attend court, which was regular, one of the first questions, and I guarantee, on every single occasion, in the many thousands of occasions that I stood in court, one of the first questions, either question one or two, that they would ask me, and they would say, Officer, when did you write your evidential notes? Now, if I turned around, as I did, and said within 20, 30 minutes of the, of the event, so the event was fresh in my mind, and the account is accurate, they would then accept that as evidence. If I was to turn around and say, Your Honour, my notes were made 400 years after the event, then you can imagine what would have been said. 
So we are being asked to believe that something written 400 years after the alleged death of this character is in fact accurate and true. <clears throat> it's not. So you have to look in through the eyes of the mystics, through the Gnostics, through the, the, the seers and those who, who are involved in the initiations and the secret teachings. And when you get into their eyes, when you get into their mind, you can clearly see what they are trying to express. Now, out of the 4,200 recorded religions of this world, and all of the monuments, all of the monuments, all of the holy writ, the sacred texts and everything around the world, they are all referring to the same thing, but they are expressing it and describing it differently. And the one thing that they are all describing is you. And how to, to make the journey and the transition from the human condition to the human potential, the Sphinx of Egypt, where man arises from his animal nature to his divine nature. And, you know, when we see the Lamb of God and all of these things, the Lamb of God, the spring, Aries, means to arise. Yet again, you're talking about this inner process of inner illumination. And that is where we're kind of going in relation to who these characters are. They are metaphors that hide this inner process of illumination. When you start looking at some of history that we are told happened in the Middle East, in the Holy Lands, in Jerusalem, in Palestine, Yes, we have country and region names of those names, but it didn't happen there. It happened in, in the British Isles, in the United Kingdom, and mainly England, Scotland, Ireland and Wales, <clears throat> where the Jewish Messiah, the person labelled the Jewish Messiah, who was Shimon Kar Hakba, was fighting Adrian in Palestine which is in Scotland, because Palestine means between two walls, which is Hadrian's Wall and Antonine Wall. <clears throat> so you have the Jewish Messiah in Palestine fighting against the Romans. When you start looking at Edinburgh and the Temple Mount, which is Edinburgh Castle, Edinburgh means Town of Eden. So you then got the Garden of Eden, which then brings in Fife, and you start bringing in the lost ten tribes of Israel that can be found in the extremities of the world. And when you start looking at England, it's Angleland, or where, where the French the French call it Angleterre, which means the end of the world, the extremities of the world, which is where the ten lost tribes of Israel can be found. So the exodus is also an inner process of illumination, but a physical exodus didn't happen in the Sinai Desert, and that is why Israeli archaeologists have come out and says we've not found any evidence of it, because it didn't happen there. It was the uh, Bosphorus Straits in Turkey, Istanbul. Bosphorus ironically means Oxford, Oxford, and the, some of the tribes of Israel went from there through to the British Isles. That is your biblical exodus. The Bible talks about the ends of the earth the extremities of the earth belonging to israel and the salvation of israel is the bald eagle which is the emblem of america america as you will see always comes to the aid and the defense of israel because that it is america is its protector and its salvation jerusalem as william blake said you know he will not rest he will not put down his sword until jerusalem has been buildeth on England's green and pleasant land. It is here, the UK are the Holy Lands. You have those who are involved in the Holy Crusades, the Knights Templars, and their base was at Roslyn Chapel in Scotland, which is the epicenter of Earth's ley lines, your Holy Grail. And when you start looking at the, 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 the ley lines of Earth, the epicenter being Roslyn Chapel, it goes all the way through to Europe, through uh, to the Louvre in France, and you have the Scottish Parliament, which is ironically on top of the Holyrood ley line, which is the Rose line, Roslyn. And that is why we have so many rose emblems throughout history, because of the battle for the Holy Grail, for the ley lines, for the control. 
of that rail line. So what we are told is the Middle East is not the Holy Lands, it is the British Isles. And British means Brith-ish, which is man of the covenant, the covenant with the Hebrew God. And when you start looking at the Queen, who said she was from the house of David, you know, and you start out putting all of these different things, like the, the symbol of Israel, which is the lion and the unicorn, and you then start looking at the British passport <clears throat> and the British coat of arms, it is the lion and the unicorn. <clears throat> so all of this historical, should we say, what they're telling us is fact, is false. It's been, it, it's, it's been changed. History has been changed by largely the Church of Rome. <clears throat> These characters, your Jesus, your Mary Magdalene, your Joseph, your Mother Mary, your Cain, your Abel, <clears throat> they are not real people. And when, when you understand what they truly are, which again, are metaphor in illumination, then you become Christified. You see, every, every month, when the moon goes into your sun sign, which is the month of your birth, for two and a half days, this seed is in the manger, solar plexus, created by the minerals and the cerebral spinal fluids of the body. So the seed grows, the Christ grows in the manger, which is the solar plexus. And it stays there getting lunar and solar charged for two and a half days. It then goes to the penile gland region. And this is also confirmed by Gray's medical dictionary. But by the pineal gland, there is this gap called the tomb so this seed goes into the tomb where it remains for three days <clears throat> where it is crucified crucified means to increase the power of a thousandfold so when you see buddha which means enlightened and he has a thousand lotus leaves on his head that's where it comes from the seed the christ is crucified enhanced in golgotha <clears throat> the place of skulls in the tomb in the pineal gland region between the olive and the pyramid which again are two regions of the brain <clears throat> that when you when the, the these things become unified inside you you become christified <clears throat> and that's what it means to be christian not what you see today we have been so we say spun a yarn in terms of our history, biblically and otherwise, you know, and shells like this begin to expose some kind of truth. Okay. It's, there's a lot to digest there, a lot to take on. Um, going back to, um, you mentioned that the Bible was written on the Giza Plateau in the Sphinx in the pyramids. How did you, how did you discover that? Because it's not something I've ever heard before. Well, when you look at the, the correlation between Christ and Osiris, because again, Osiris on his coffin, on his sarcophagus, he has grain growing from the coffin. And there was an Egyptian ritual called breaking of the body. And those who understand Egyptian mythology set, broke Osiris's body up into 14 pieces. Mm -hmm. And it was put together by ISIS. Basically, ISIS just needs to exist. So, when you understand the, the story between Osiris and Christ, they both relate to bread, they both relate to grain, and it both relates to take this body. So, when you look at the word Christ, and you look at the mathematics of the Great Pyramid, the numerical value of the word Christ is encrypted within the mathematics of the Great Pyramid. The words Lord Jesus Christ are encrypted within the mathematics of the Sphinx. So is the, the dimensions of New Jerusalem. The book of Revelation is hidden within the Sphinx. So the Egyptian knowledge became biblical scripture. <clears throat> and there's so much more to it as well in, in terms of <clears throat> what Osiris is because it means open eye well, that's referring to the invisible eye which is the third eye and that is what osiris means <clears throat> and then you start getting into all the different component parts 
and you realize that that's exactly what the tombs and the pyramids and the sphinx were also relating to and that is how you have the sermon in stone which is the Giza plateau which has nine pyramids which represent the number nine which is man which is the lesser worlds and the pyramid is the ascent out of them <clears throat> which is what christ is it is the christified being which is which takes you outside of your animal nature into your human and your divine because we are all born <clears throat> in a manger of animals which is the world and its animalistic nature and this divine child chi life force energy comes into a physical body it slows down it decays and that's why you die and that is what science believes to be electromagnetism which is really a side effect of decaying life force energy but we all come here and we all have to resurrect ourselves amongst the animals the animalistic nature of man <clears throat> to become divine it's fascinating stuff really really fascinating um how how um how are the uh the bible stories actually encoded <clears throat> within the pyramids so i mean um is uh, are you talking about mathematics or can, can you elaborate on that a little bit more for us yeah again when, when you make the comparison of what the bible stories are telling you and the purpose of the pyramid and what the pyramid means then they equate to the same thing and when you look at the fabric of matter is the cube and divinity is represented by the triangle or the pyramid now when you take the top 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 four corners off a cube you get the tetrahedron which is the pyramid so the pyramid is relates or, or relates to divinity within matter <clears throat> the god within that's what the pyramid symbolizes and when you look at what does christ symbolize again it is divinity within matter it is god within you <clears throat> when you look at different you know joseph joseph means to enhance so you are enhancing this process through mother mary who takes the hand of the child the seed and the mother mary is the serpent energy which is the kundalini which comes all the way up jacob's ladder <clears throat> jacob's ladder is the spine it is the highway between earth which are the chakras from the solar plexus down and it takes you all up the ladder to the kingdom of heaven which is from the solar plexus upwards and the angels or the angles of light come up and down jacob's ladder so and mother mary is the serpent it is the serpent energy that takes this seed to golgotha <clears throat> so when you start looking at what the pyramids mean what the, the characters of egypt mean the, what the gods mean and you equate that to what jesus means and mary means and joseph means it all equates <clears throat> okay. okay so a couple of questions just want to briefly go back to the Jewish Messiah that you mentioned, Shimon Ha Kokba. Is that right? Shimon, which means Shimon. to listen. Right. So Shimon Ba Kokba. Okay. So he was known as the Jewish Messiah, right. and the Jewish Messiah was in Palestine, which we believe to be the Middle East. It's not. It's in Scotland, and he was fighting Emperor Adrian who wanted to solve the Jewish problem. Now, when you look at the way in which those of, of, of Judaic faith, Jews, have spread across the world and set up lives for themselves in various countries, in various nations, it was the Scythians who are Hebrews that went into Ukraine, went into Russia, and created Crimea. Now you're gonna now I'm giving you a secret message of the true reason for the war. <clears throat> because it's not what the BBC are telling you. <laughs> Many nations around the world, <clears throat> in a wrong way, in my view, 
in a bloodthirsty way, in my view, in a completely immoral way, in my view, are sorting what they consider the Jewish problem. <clears throat> That's what Putin's doing now in Ukraine. That's what Putin did when he took over Crimea. <clears throat> See, we are not being told the truth. There's, there's a deeper reason for this. It comes from biblical times that far back mm. when you have this group of people who believe that they own the ends of the world, the extremities of the world, <clears throat> and they are taking over them. Who are and, these people, Michael? Well, are we talking? Was, sorry, are we talking about the Khazarian mafia? Well, well, the Khazars were Celts. That the Khazars are Celtic. <clears throat> so again, it, it's it's the British Isles, Judaism. Khazars being converted to Judaism when you have a Zionist viewpoint infiltrated in the American government and the British government, British Prime Ministers cannot take office unless they become members of Friends of Israel <clears throat> so what is happening around the world is this group of people who have become the last ten tribes which include your Khazars, include your Celts include the Herabi, which are the Hebrews and they spread out across the world and many nations again in a way that I disagree with are trying to deal with what they deem to be the Jewish problem their terms not mine and this is why we've got wars in Ukraine at the moment and this is why they they believe that they are the chosen people and wherever they seek to live they have the right to displace people who have lived there for many centuries so <clears throat> this is why the uk and the british Isles has always been a hotbed and contested by many invading forces throughout history and how the british Isles have also been a rule britannia rules the waves and have invaded many other countries around the world it is the same epicenter of people who are looking for world dominance through various infiltration but all of this happened in the british Isles, not the middle east Okay. Let's um, let's talk about the Holy Grail. What what's the Holy Grail according to your research, Michael? The Holy Grail, again, with, with anything that there's never one singular meaning for any particular thing. And when you, you when you have a spiritual answer or an astronomical answer, a metaphysical answer, you also have a physical answer as above, so below. <clears throat> The Holy Grail in, in terms of the intangible. Earth's ley lines are like the veins of the body. And you have magnetic energy that's created by tectonic plates around the world. And you have certain powerful magnetic intersections where these energy lines, the dragon lines, cross. And this is where you find your churches, your cathedrals, your stonehenges, your pyramids. They're all on these dragon lines. And a lot of them are marked with domes around the world, the intersections. So the king dome of God, the kingdom, the king dome of God, or where wisdom is, the wise dome, the head. You have cosmic energy that comes in into these intersections, which are also known as chalice points. So the chalice are the intersections of ley line energy which brings in divine energies from other worlds and that then goes through the earth ley line system the guardians of the grids of the ley lines of the dragon lines were the knights templars temple templars and the epicenter is roslyn chapel on the rose line that is, that is your metaphysical Holy Grail. When you start looking at a physical Holy Grail, <clears throat> you then start getting into the womb, which is the vessel of God. The only way that we can come into this world is through the womb. Now, when you see the likes of Donald Trump doing this kind of symbol, mm -hmm. the two thumbs mean return to the ether, and that is the cosmic womb, which is universal consciousness. And that is 
the second coming that's when we go back to the womb in effect when we walk into a church through which yoni shaped arch we are returning to the womb so <clears throat> these are these this is what the holy grail is in in essence it is really the, the the magnetic energy that is enhanced by cosmic energy that comes into the earth through chalice points and the guardians are the templars based at Roslyn chapel the epicenter of our ley line system <clears throat> that is your holy grail uh there's 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 much more to it but in essence that's what it is so so does the holy grail tie into christ consciousness at all <clears throat> it, are they both linked together they are because the the the, the, the ley line system of the earth really can enhance human consciousness a global consciousness and that is why the british government have been talking about for a, for a long long while putting the dual carriageway directly underneath stonehenge i was just thinking i was just thinking yeah. that. <laughs> for anybody who's actually been to stonehenge in every direction that you look it is miles and miles and miles of field so you don't need to put a dual carriageway underneath stonehenge the only reason that they are doing that is because it is disrupting the ley line energy of earth Mm. it's the same as in your body you know one of your veins is blocked you know about it mm. if something is blocked in these earth arteries then it disrupts the whole system there's yeah. also a road that runs all the way through avebury the avebury stone circle as well isn't there yes yeah, so they, they do like to disrupt these energies they do i spoke to maria wheatley a few months ago and she said that the term ley lines isn't particularly the best way of describing these things because they sort of uh, weave and web so they're more like rivers of energy but, yes um, yeah I'm, I'm absolutely convinced that these are real now that they, they are real and i mean again you know you can name them what you want people tend to put names and labels on on them mm. uh it's the same as the word god i don't like to use the word god but because everybody understands you know god to me is not as i say not the god of the bible because that's not god mm. it is the breath of god it is the holy spirit of god that connects us to the creator <clears throat> but you can call them whatever you want and they, they are rivers of energy literally are rivers of energy and and, and like any other river they do meander <clears throat> you know but yes uh they, they do exist they are real that is why as i say you have these spiritually designed buildings in certain enhanced energetic centers because they are harnessing the energy from that you know some people call them the dragon lines which is where you get the story of george and the dragon and, and there's there's different names for them but in essence they do exist okay so how would one start the process of uh becoming christ conscious what's the first <clears throat> step the step according to mystical teachings is when this seed is in your manger for the two and a half days and when this seed is in the tomb for three days for those five and a half days you are supposedly meant to abstain from wasting the seed in other words celibacy mm -hmm. and that then retains the seed and that gives you the the good side of the tree of life if if you retain that seed for the body it is the good side of the tree of life your spine and your nerve systems if you waste that seed due to the spasm of the animal lust then you are wasting it which is the evil side of the tree of good and evil now when you start looking at thou shalt not commit adultery it's really saying thou shalt not waste the sacred seed and when you look at the word come it comes from the egyptian word bow which means to die so if you waste the seed the christ seed dies right. at the moment you come and that exits your body it dies so what you that is what according to the mystical teachings is what you are meant to do to retain the seed which is then used for the consciousness of the body and it's something like i think 10 percent which is where we get tithing so when you when they the, the bring the platform in church and you put your change on there and they call it tithing tithing means 10 percent 10 so you are 
retaining 10% of that sacred seed, which is then being reused towards the consciousness of the body. Fascinating. Michael, I, I could take uh, a couple of sentences that you said over the last 35 minutes and we could talk about one of those things for like hours, literally. It's brilliant. It's absolutely fascinating, mate. Um, should we talk a little bit about aliens? Do you mind? No, I don't mind yeah. at all. <laughs> I didn't think you would. Brilliant. Okay. So, have aliens played a role in the history of mankind? And if so, to what extent? Yes, they have. Yes, they still do. And some of them were probably here before we were. Because humans, we are not from Earth either. When you look at our genetics, it is programmed in the cosmos with codes. And when you look at the physical body, the oxygen and the carbon that make up the physical body are a result of an exploded star in the Orion Nebula. So the human condition is not from Earth. So when you, when you look at creation itself, from Einstein's E equals MC squared, which was only 50% 50, 50 of, the, of the true equation, if we'd have had the full and proper equation, then it would go into vector space, it would go into magnetic rotating spheres of space. Those rotating spheres create sound, which is the word of God, sound. Mm -hmm. and, and every sound has a shape and every shape is a sound. So everything that we see in creation is a sound. Dimensions, timelines, star systems are a sound. They are a frequency. Mm -hmm. So this unity, the original unity, can only create the opposite of itself, which is disunity, which is separation. We know that as polarity or duality. Duality gives us a mechanism in which to have a comparison of how far we are progressing. Without duality, there's no comparison, there is no measuring stick. If I say to you, how do you feel today? And you say, I feel wonderful. How do you know? Because at some point you felt terrible. And that is your comparison. And if I know a little bit more tomorrow than I know today, then I have a comparison to judge that progress. Duality is also the only way in which you can attain balance because you unify the opposites, which is equilibrium. So from, from that duality, you have the same scale, but one half of it you would deem to be a negative and one half of it you would deem to be a positive. On that basis, everything in the universe is positive, negative, or a neutral force. So when you have your two pillars and you have your arch, the arch is the neutral force that connects the positive and negative. Again, your church, again, your bows and gelchium of masonry. It is the equilibrium, it is balance. So because the universe is neutral, positive, or negative, in our view, all that is in the universe is neutral, positive, or negative. So therefore, Visiting travellers would either be neutral, positive, or negative. Some would be, I just want to observe and I don't really care. Some would be, I want to help. And some would be, I wish to hinder. Now, the ones that wish to hinder are the creators of the false matrix, the false timeline, and the negative condition of Earth and humanity. And they are trying to keep you there by all means. The positive side are the ones that are trying to pull us out of this negative low vibration to a new timeline to a new dimension through a frequency rise they're the positive side in my view the positive aliens are advanced spiritual humans who have progressed beyond this the lower world of lessons and they need to continue that journey of discovery on other star systems that are more compatible with their frequency now would you, would you link those with the Palladians at all? Some Palladians are positive, some Palladians are not. Right. The same as some humans are positive and some humans are not. Mm -hmm. So, you, you, you know, you, it really depends on who you bump into on a particular day, I, I suspect. But they have always been here. They've always been recorded by ancient man as being here. 
the stuff inside the Great Pyramid in octave sealed rooms that are not from this world. There are metals with alien inscriptions that talk about the, the access points of Earth. They have always been there. You know, I have seen portals opening up in the sky and I've seen things coming out of them. So okay, they so are coming in and out of this world. Because one of, one of well, really, the only problem I've got with the alien theory, I suppose, is that to get here, they must cover vast distances. And how on earth would they achieve that? But I think you just explained it, basically. Well, well, when you can, I mean, for argument's sake, when, when you can travel at the speed of light, the start of your journey is also the end of the journey. It's in the same moment. So there is no distance. There is no time. Time is not something that is static, it is fluid, it is a perception. And if I was to travel faster than you, then my time would be different to yours. If I was in, in a fighter jet going supersonic speeds and I was wearing a watch, my time would be slightly different to yours. Mm. So time is really a perception. And the start of your journey is also the end of your journey because the beginning is the end, the end is the beginning, the first is the last, the last is the first. Brilliant. Okay. Um, what, do you give any credence to uh, the 2001 Space Odyssey film? Do you think that film is telling us stuff? <clears throat> that, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, and not just that one. Not just that one. I mean, one of the, the, one of the new blockbusters in the, in, in the cinemas now is Avatar. Mm -hmm. And... Again, going back to the Holy Lands of Scotland, you know, you used to have a warrior, a forest warrior race called the Picts, and they used to paint themselves blue. And when you start looking at Arthur's seat, King Arthur's seat, which is next to a sphinx shaped hill, and there's a tree, and there's been many attempts to fell that tree. So when you start looking at blue warriors protecting a tree, and then you look at Avatar, well, then you can go back to Scotland and the fight against Rome and, and, and different things again. This is correlation. 2001 is a date that is written in the Great Pyramid. And it specifically says that 2001 is the 17th 360 year cycle of Egyptian star codes. And that's when it starts in 2001. And the significance of that is that is when ancient knowledge would be re-emerged into the world. Now, when you look at the basically the meaning of Space Odyssey 2001, every time this strange monolith appears, the race is enhanced. Mm -hmm. So when you start getting this ancient knowledge coming back from 2001, the world will be enhanced. Our race will be enhanced. Presumably, that would mean that the people that control this world, they can't be too happy about this, can they, if, if they're aware of it? And perhaps something that we've seen over the last two or three years unfold is maybe a way of trying to counteract that, possibly? What, what they are up against are the forces of nature. And there's no army, there's no government, there's no spaceship that is powerful than the forces of nature. So they understand that they can't stop it, but they can try and hijack it and give an explanation for it in a different way right. and that is what they're trying to do it's the same as black magicians can't use the symbols of white magicians so what do they do they corrupt them and they change them and they invert them hmm. so that's what they are doing they can't stop it but they can try and take people's focus away and give them an explanation for what is not and claim that that's what it is that's what's happening and, and that's what they're doing at the moment because they realize that they can't they can't stop the forces of nature mm. brilliant okay great okay cheers michael um i'm very interested in your role as a spiritual uh, coach could you explain your approach to this role and um how it can help people yes um some time ago and even now i was getting so so many emails that people were asking for help people were asking for direction people were asking for an explanation as to what was happening to them some of the things that they, they were experiencing or seeing or feeling 
and they wanted some kind of perspective and some kind of a semblance of order on, on what they were witnessing in their own life and because i was getting so so many emails and again even now i still do but asking for help i thought well i'll i'll, I'll do it in a proper one-on-one -on -one, face to face like this capacity and what i wanted to do was create a safe space sacred space for people to express themselves and to speak about anything they want and that really was the birth of the spiritual coaching side of things and i don't necessarily know what's coming uh i'll get a, a sort of a brief a brief idea of, of past or, or what's troubling them but i don't know really what's coming and it can be anything from what does this symbol mean it can be my horse died today and i'm absolutely devastated how can i raise myself and do these things when i'm in such grief to you know tell me who jesus is or you know what is happening because every time i'm just about to walk this door i keep getting dragged back and i seem to be sabotaged and we rewind it and we take me back to a should we say a weed that's been planted in the subconscious mind normally through childhood hmm. and we rewind the tape back and we address that and then they can move forward so that that's kind of what goes on in, in a typical session so it sounds a little bit similar to uh trauma therapy like a kind of a spiritual trauma therapy if you like i guess it is it hmm. is because when anything happens in a, in a physical sense it's as a result of, of a spiritual problem that's never been addressed and it usually becomes a physical manifestation i mean an example of that is if people have throat problems it's usually as a result of not expressing themselves and not speaking their mind and what happens then is there's this energy that can't express and it's basically like bills in, in a sink mm. And that then becomes a physical manifested problem, which have they have expressed themselves mm. and it's for them to decide how they wish to express themselves. But had they expressed themselves, then that energy would have been released and it wouldn't be stagnating in their throat. Mm. So it is really uh, the, the things that you find in the physical realm are a result of something that's not been addressed in a metaphysical way. Mm. Brilliant, mate. Okay. Um, the last time we spoke, uh, you were writing a book. Um, who built the pyramids? Is that right? Yes. Is it it's finished yet? Yeah? Because well, I'm, I'm coming to read it. <laughs> it's, it's still being written, but it's also now being written simultaneously with, with a book called "The Lost Word of God," and that's gonna that that's a word that a lot of people are looking for, including Freemasons and, and different secret societies. So it's called the lost word of god and, and the book will tell you what that word is um, so that's been written simultaneously to who built the pyramids so i'm hoping it won't be too much longer okay brilliant okay incidentally you bring up 2001 again um i recently mm. discovered that there are 2001 masonic lodges all over the world did you know that i didn't no, know I didn't. that until recently yeah but yeah so Obviously, you know, a lot of the Masons uh, are looking into this ancient alien theory. Um, you were also you were also writing some children's books, if I remember rightly. They sounded really good. Could you, in case people haven't seen our first video together, could you explain the concept of those children's books? Because I think it's a great idea. Yet again, they've been written. I just went for them to be illustrated. But, but the concept of it really is to bring this secret knowledge down a, a few volumes into the into the mind of a child and the concept is that this this child who spends a lot of time in his own room and he's happy there and that's me as a child and he's in his room one day he's, his mom's downstairs but he hears a knock on the door and he goes downstairs he opens the door and there's no one there but he looks on the doorstep and there's this book this old looking book and he picks it up and he walks back up to his bedroom and puts it on the shelf every now and again he has the urge to take the book off the shelf and, and flick through the pages and every time he does this this portal appears 
and it goes to a particular point and a particular place in history. And one of them would be you'll go to the Great Pyramid, you'll go to Atlantis, you'll go to Stonehenge, you'll go and meet King Arthur. And there's the seven of them. So again, seven is the sacred number of the third dimension. And one of them is the, the last one is basically on, a, on a, some kind of ship and all the characters of, of the previous six all congregate. But so what happens is this, this young child goes to these places. He's met by a guardian. He's he has a wonderful time. He's allowed to have a wonderful time. He's you know when he goes to Atlantis, he's, he's swimming with dolphins and, and different things. He, had, he has a wonderful child time. And then at the end of that, this guardian, who is different in each of the locations, comes up to him and says, "Okay, I now need you to come with me, because I have something I need to tell you, which you must take back to your time." And that's when they explain to him what these monuments and what these things really mean and what their purpose were and after this this sacred knowledge is given to him the portal appears and he's back in his bedroom and he's in and, and initially he's thinking was that a dream what, what was going on but on every occasion he's actually brought back a physical artifact with him so he realizes that actually now it, it did happen and that is that is the concept so it, it, it's for a child but it's also for the parents and grandparents who are reading it but it's bringing this knowledge to to a the mind of a child so that they can understand it where they can have their fun in these different locations mm. but where they then get the true meaning of these places that he must bring back to his world with him and and that is really the concept of, of children's books it's a fantastic concept i wish you uh, a lot of luck with that i think it's a brilliant idea if i'd been like a seven eight year old boy reading those books i'd have been so happy absolutely fantastic michael where can people find out more about you how to get in touch etc buy your books the the best place really is my website which is michael uh from there there's free videos there's free articles there's, there's newsletter subscriptions there's links to get to different social media youtube facebook so that's probably the best place to go and from there they can find me in, in, in many different places there's also a contact form on there as well uh, for people to email me directly fantastic mate i'll share that underneath the video thanks for joining me today i really look forward to reading those books mate when they come out um thank you for all you do your work and research it's fascinating stuff hope you've enjoyed it everyone please like share and subscribe and we'll see you again thank you michael cheers thank you very much